Thank you for joining tonight's webinar, Discover Self Tonic Multi-Target Protection for the Heart and Vessels. This is a three pivotal herbs that provide multi-target protection, and they include salvia, panax, notoginseng, and borneal. When combined, these herbs act synergistically to improve circulation, increase blood flow, lower total cholesterol, reduce plaque formation, and prevent thrombosis. These are all factors that contribute to angina, heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, and cold extremities. In addition, uh, by increasing microcirculation, they assist in reducing angina and diabetic complications, including diabetic mass macrovascular disease. And it is also known as a TCM product, um, and these herbs are understood to invigorate blood, remove blood stasis, regulate qi to alleviate pain in the chest due to stagnation and blood. So um, with that said, let's uh, introduce Dr. Zhao. So Dr. Isabel Zhao, she works at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. She's been there, uh, she has over 15 years working experience and knowledge in data management, clinical trials, preclinical research, and clinical practice. In addition um, to her master's in clinical epidemiology from the University of British Columbia, Dr. Zhao holds a master's in pharmacology and a PhD degree in pathogen biology from the Tianjin Medical University in China. She also has been involved in practicing internal medicine, assisting in clinical trials and involvement in new drug screening and action mechanism studies. She's been working with the TASLI group, and this is um, a group originally from China that um, manufactures self tonic. She's been actively involved with research fields, focusing on design, setting up, managing, and analyzing longitudinal and clinical trial databases. So she definitely is an expert and will be able to share from a very clinical perspective how um, and what self tonic is all about and how this can be effective for your patients and in practice. So with that said, what I'd like to do is pass it over to Dr. Zhao and she will be able to uh, give our presentation for tonight. Uh, one final note is that for questions, uh, we always welcome questions and so you can type them into the chat room or into the Q&A section. Questions will generally be held to the end of the presentation unless there is needing of clarification during the presentation. And so, as I said, uh, please type your questions into the chat room or into the Q&A section and we'll make sure that we get those answered for you. Okay, Dr. Zhao. Thank you, Hatta. Good evening, everyone. So I will start uh, from sharing you a story. Last year, I got a letter from David Chapman. Under his consent, I would like to share you the story he told me in the story, in the letter. Who is this uh, David Chapman? 30 years ago, David set up a company called Purity House Pro Life House Products. Today, it grows into Canada's number one supplier of natural health products directly servicing over 5,000 health food, pharmacy, and practitioner accounts across Canada. Around 11 years ago, David was troubled by a symptom. He felt it was indigestion. However, later it turned out to be angina. Within the years, he got three stents and one minor heart attack he had Western medicines, osteopathic therapy, and was on diet to keep his lab examinations close to normal, which he said is definitely not easy. However, use David's word, a miracle happened in David's life. The product is called Saftonic. He started Saftonic three years ago after the recurrence of angina. Within a few weeks, the angina went away and has never returned. After being on it less than two months, his cardiologist invited him to do a stress test. You know what? He passed. It never happened before. Every six months thereafter, no issues at all. Now his blood pressure 
has returned to normal, and he's taking subtonic as a maintenance dosage, two capsules per day. Dear listeners, what does David's experience tell us? As a trained internist, pharmacologist, and a clinical data scientist, many times I was challenged by questions from patients, consumers, peer practitioners, researchers, and even myself. Why? Why it works? How? What if? You must have uh, many question marks as well. Today, I will introduce three key points. So the first one, I will introduce one of the most unrecognized organ in our body. It's called microcirculation, besides the well-known macrocirculation. And then I will walk you through circulatory systems function and this function to help you gain perspectives on reasons why it matters to both you and me. Furthermore, I will review the key traditional Chinese medicine concepts related to our topic. Then I will introduce Tesla's approach to tackle the circulatory dysfunction, which I call it as a Tesla strategy. Okay, follow me, let's start our journey. So our first stop will talk about the circulatory system. There's two sets of vascular systems. In fact, they work as one system. So we call it one part, call it macro circulation. It is composed of the heart, arteries, and veins providing the blood flow reaching oxygen and the nutrients to an organ and the vista matter from the organ. In contrast, we look at, at the right side of the screen. The microcirculation is the circulation of the blood in the smallest blood vessels present in the vasculature, vasculature embedded with the organ tissues. As the blood moves through the capillaries, the oxygen and other nutrients move out into the cells, tissues, and with the matter from the cells moves into the capillaries. Both macro and macro circulation have distinct vital roles to keep the homeostasis of our cardiovascular system. In one word, both the systems are integrated together. And also, the soundness of this, uh, the functions of a cardiovascular system also are very vital for other body systems. Later on, we will discover more. That's a talk about macrocirculation. So you know how it is composed of. I would like to highlight the amazing part of our circulatory system. The heart beats around three billion times in the average person's life to pump the blood back and forth. We have thousands of miles of blood vessels in your body. However, it takes about only 20 to zero seconds for a red blood cell to circle the whole body. Another number to give you for our circulatory system, this system will nurture 60 trillion other body cells and are carrying away all the waste. Now in my hand, I have a piece of a copy paper. The average thickness of a copy paper is 100 micrometer. Why I talk about the copy paper? I will let you know another number, 5%. The tiniest part of the circulatory system is only 5% of the thickness of a piece of this copy paper. 
allocates in the macro circulation. Macro circulation is a blood flow through blood vessels smaller than the thickness of this piece of paper. Typically, a microcirculatory unit, so we can see from this picture, so the unit turns from arterial to a venue with the capillaries in the middle. So look at the middle part. Here, so we can check, you can find out the tiniest part of the circulatory system. You may ask a question. So we have this long web, webbed the circulatory system. The how long, you may be wondering, how long do all capillaries add up together? I have a number for you. It's estimated 400, 20 hundred kilometers in length. So give you a concrete concept. How long is it? Look at here. Look at this picture. So the length equals to the equator of Earth. According to Mr. Google, I gave you two examples. So how long it may be. If you're living in Vancouver, so you may know uh, there's a another city called Chilliwack. So from Vancouver to Chilliwack is 100 kilometers. It's only 100. And if you're living in other provinces, that's a talk about from Vancouver to Toronto. So this distance, only one-tenth of the micro, micro, uh, microcirculatory system in our body. Limited by the time, we don't have to we don't have the luxury to get to the details. However, two points I would like to you take home after today's uh, lecture. So the first one, endothelium. Endothelium is a layer, so look at here. This is a, a tiny layer, a thin layer, covering the inner side, inner side of uh, blood vessels. Not only in the macro circulation, but uh, in the macro circulation as well. In the capillary, in the tiniest, thinnest part, only one endothelium will wrap up into a vessel to allow the blood to pass through. So now we remember the endothelium. Later, we'll talk about uh, the role of endothelium in our body because uh, of the endothelium. So it makes the microcirculation become the largest uh, hidden organ in our body, in our body because the endothelium will get involved with a lot of uh, different uh, functions and uh, reactions. So the first point, endothelium. The second part, we will talk about Inflammation. So that typically, we start uh, from uh, our understanding of uh, inflammation from this view. So look at this picture. So you would des describe it as redness, heat, and a sweaty pain. We're so familiar with this uh, typical classical inflammation. However, within the microcirculation system, so we also have inflammation happens, and I call microcirculation as the battlefield of the inflammation. So here I show you this picture, so you can see every single part of the microcirculation gets involved with the inflammatory reactions, and there is some many different cells get involved. We talk about uh, endothelium, so endothelium wall get involved, and also the blood vessels within and also cells outside the blood vessel also get involved. They just uh, like uh, you know, soldiers, they throw off their weapons and uh, try to distract uh, 
destroy other substance or suspicious enemies or real enemies. So this makes the macro circulation system as a big battlefield. So from the good point, we need information to keep our immune from other enemies or, or you know, alien substances. However, if the exaggeration of the inflammation, it may lay, lay the foundation for many, many disease. How about uh, in, the, in the case of uh, circulatory system congestion, just like a Davis situation, so your body inside the blood flow just uh, cannot uh, pass through a certain part of your blood vessels, just like this view. And uh, what may happen? This is uh, in the circulatory cardiovascular uh, part. However, there's uh, many, many studies also prove, uh, provide evidence for the critical role of inflammation in disease development as diverse as atherosclerosis, just like Davis situation, and also in diabetes, cancer, reperfusion injury, like a myocardial infarction or stroke, and Alzheimer's disease. So now look at this uh, table. So this, I, this table, I, the data I extracted from Statistics Canada. So you will have a look, check why Canadians died, because what? So we can check if we take out intentional self-harm, suicide out, we will find out all other diseases are all related with inflammation. So the key point is inflammatory dysfunction matters to both you and me, to Canadians. Then you may have another question mark. How to deal with it? And what's the optimal therapy? I will take a break and uh, show you this picture. This is a Yellow River, known as the Mother River by the Chinese people. It's around uh, 55. 100 kilometers long. So Mr. Google this time told me again, the river is longer than the distance between Vancouver and the Quebec City. It runs through nine provinces and, uh, and the 33 major cities locating along its way. It ran from the far northwest of China to the east side of China. Chinese people proudly call the river as a cradle of a Chinese civilization. Because of an early history of Chinese history, it's the most prosperous region. Unfortunately, it also has another name. This name is called China's Sorrow due to frequent devastating floods and droughts. The river is regarded as a river with the most sediment in the world, with over 30 branches and countless streams, obstruction by the sediments in the river beds could produce a negative impact. And also the sediments gives uh, the name, the real color of the water in the Yellow River is yellow. So now you will ask me, so what's the point of, uh, of the Yellow River, of this story? So we can find out a similar situation in our body. Look at here. A heart attack can happen when the blood flow to one section of the heart muscle here is suddenly blocked and the muscle cannot get oxygen. Most common reasons is the rupture of the atherosclerotic plaque 
so show here, so the yellow part. Most of the patients, the main complaint, chest pain. Look at here, chest pain, all called angina, angina pectoris, chest discomfort, and or short of breath. Some patients may feel upper body discomfort or pain, or just like David felt indigestion. So what's the current practice to deal with this situation? Simply put it, you just uh, put under medications to dilate the obstructed blood vessels. All doctors may prescribe you cardiac procedures or surgeries to force open the blocked vessels. And then suppose your life back to normal. However, remember, David's situation, David got three stents. Bill Clinton had a second operation to change his stents. That's a caveat of this current practice. The patient may require more procedures in the future to force open other blocked parts. Let's have a close look at a self-tonic. The miracle product David mentioned. So I talked about, uh, I will introduce a Tesla strategy. So what's a Tesla strategy? Tesla strategy is to use this herbal, herbal formula to give a multi-target protection on both our macro and uh, micro circulation. So what's the function of this product? Heiser has uh, introduced, uh, so I will give you the details. So the, traditionally, it is used uh, to invigorate blood, remove blood stasis, and uh, to regulate T, to elevate pain in the chest due to the stagnation of T and the blood. I know it's really a mouthful. So what, what's the meaning, question marks? So what's the meaning about blood, tea, invigorate, stasis, stagnation? Now it's the time to introduce some basic TCM terminologies. So for the traditional Chinese medicine, this, this is a system of healing that originated thousands of years ago. It has evolved into a well-developed coherent system of medicine that uses several different modalities to treat and prevent illness. Chinese herbal medicine is one of the most commonly used therapeutic methods. Other than that, acupuncture, moxa, you, you, you must know about that. Different from Westerners, Asian Chinese are holistic but specific thinkers. That is, uh, Chinese people think from macro to micro. Therefore, Chinese uh, view the whole human body and its uh, functioning as a whole. Not, no single body part or symptom can be understood apart from its relation to the whole. So, so I will introduce qi. So what's qi? If we translate qi into English, it means a vital energy. That's the energy power inside your body, what animates us and allows us to move and maintain the activities of life. And uh, the second term is uh, meridian. So meridian is a channel or pathways through which qi is constantly flowing and circulating through, throughout the body. I would like to remind you, remember, that this is uh, from a Chinese perspective. In fact, it's talking about a functioning. It's not one specific, specific part. So this meridian is not equal to 
the circulatory system blood vessels from a Westerner's wheel. And talk about organ. In fact, I don't like the word organ translated into English as organ. We, we may call it uh, major functions. So if TCM talks about uh, organ, that talks about uh, major functions, means uh, some major functions related, we use the term heart, liver, kidney. However, once again, it's not the heart from the anatomy in your body. It's a function group. And also, TCM associates specific functions, the symptoms, emotions, colors, and the tastes with each function groups. The so next term will be blood. The blood is the red blood. However, it can the blood can also include uh, the lymph system. So it's the body liquid that uh, circulates through the body, nourishing and moistening the various organs and the tissues. So in the TCM, for the, all the symptoms symptoms oh we talk about uh, the disharmony and uh, unbalance so for the disharmony related to today's topic i will introduce a stagnant of t that means the impairment of the normal movement of t through the meridians and may result in aches and pains in the body so you, you, now you, you can get the point that if the stagnant of T happens in the function group of heart, so you may feel aches, chest pain, angina. Second disharmony is called stasis of blood. So this is stasis of blood, That's, this means blood, the flow of the blood is is it work uh, isn't working well, and uh, it may manifest as a sharp stabbing pains, accompanied by tumors, cysts, or swelling of the organs, the function group. So look at this picture. So we Chinese people we are Oriental. We have Oriental mindset. So we always have a picture in mind. So what's wellness, what's health is? So you, you may think about this picture. So the tea and the blood have the right quality, quality and the quantity. And uh, just the flow in your body. So make, your, make you energetic, make your life, make you healthy. However, what may happen if stasis or stagnation happens. So here, look at this picture. Uh -huh. Not well at all. So next one, I will talk about uh, how self-tonic can help to change both the big blood vessels and change the tiniest part of your circulatory system. Make it uh, function well and uh, back to the right situation, back to this picture. As um, I'm trained in Western medicine, and I got uh, many opportunities uh, to study herbal extracts or formulas. I have observed a lot of debates on how to reconcile the differences between Western medicine and uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Yeah, is that interesting? Even if China is the only country integrating traditional medicine into its healthcare system, and uh, traditional medicine accounts for about 40% of healthcare delivered. Yes, people are still debating and won't agree with each other about uh, how to reconcile these two systems. So how to reconcile these two systems? 
I believe the common ground could be stated as this. So we we should focus on four parts of four criteria: the safety, efficacy, quality, and the rational use. So this uh, I uh, so this is uh, I extracted from a WHO traditional medicine strategy. So that's uh, in this statement it says how to integrate traditional medicine into Western medicine system. So we need to promote the safety, efficacy, and the quality of TM by expanding the knowledge base and providing guidance on regulatory and the quality assurance standards. And from the perspective of traditional medicine, medicine practitioners, we should promote therapeutically sound use of appropriate traditional medicine by practitioners and consumers. Now we will go back to this formula. Let's have a close look at self-tonic. So this formula, why, why I would suggest so you can match my following introduction, which with WHO's recommendation, whether they match with each other. So self-tonic, we, we, we saw this uh, slide before. So the first two bullet points tell us the traditional application. And later on, I will also provide you evidence about uh, how we can use uh, Western medicine terms uh, and to to just match this uh, product with a suitable appropriate uh, user groups or consumers or patients. I so talk about the formula. Always the first question uh, will jump out of my head is: uh, Is it a good formula? So let's check the formula first. So this formula is very simple. It only has three ingredients. The first is called a cell wheel, metal razor. The Chinese people call it dan shen. It's a red sage. And the second one is a panax nodal junction. Third one is a bone So they're all from the all extract from natural ingredients. So the first, first herb, the first herb, cell wheel. Cell wheel has three functions. One is to activate blood and remove stasis. Second, relieve mental stress. Third, achieve apocytosis and analgesia. And for the second herb, panacinotogenesis, it has the effects to remove stasis, resume homeostasis, and help just uh, repel, repel pathological discharge. And the third one is bone The bone has uh, the functions to relieve pain and relieve spasm, and also can increase uh, blood flow, especially in the heart, the coronary artery. The third part is the most important part of this, uh, this the bone, this herb. It's to increase absorption of other two herbs and their bioavailability. So I introduce all the functions of the three herbs. You may ask, what's your evidence? So for the first herb, the tension cell wheel, the tension has uh, has been recorded uh, in one book, the classic of herbal medicine. So this book is over 2,500 years ago. So the similar functions has been recorded over there. And for the second and the third herbs, 
So we can find a detailed uh, description of the the latter two herbs in a book. This book is called the Compendia of Materia Medica. So this is uh, in the Ming Dynasty, about uh, 500 years ago. And I would like to introduce this picture to you, in case you may be wondering, why do the three herbs, you put them together? I know they, they historically been used. Uh, however, why the three and no other ingredients? So this uh, picture tells you this is uh, 2000 to 2500 years ago. So in that book, the first book I mentioned, so they introduced uh, the formulary uh, theory. The theory is you must have a combination of different herbs in a formula to exert different functions. And you must keep in mind efficacy and safety. So were two key points. Let's see how they work. So for they just like a team, the kingdom. So the first herb, we call it the king herb. The king herb is a cell wheel. Cell wheel have, uh, will in this formula, cell wheel's function is uh, main, the main function to tackle the main situations, disharmony, discomfort, symptoms. And uh, the second group of herbs is called minister herb. Minister herb have different functions. Either can enhance the function of the king herb, that's a panax notogenesis, can help to increase the, uh, the function of a cell wheel, or just can have uh, give the formula other functions to tackle other symptoms, the minor symptoms. And the third group of herbs is called assistant herb. In this formula, Panax notogenesis uh, has uh, two double roles, both as a minister and a assistant. So how about the assistant herbs? The function of the assistant herbs is to either to enhance the function of the other two herbs, that's uh, to improve the efficacy. Second, it may just uh, counterback the adverse reactions of the other herbs, try to relieve the harm, make it has no harm. And um, for this panacinotal ginseng, very interesting part, so I mentioned before, it can help to reach the homeostasis. We can see homeostasis. So that means one part, it can invigorate the blood and chi. At the same time, it will help to contain the main function of cell wear and prevent unwanted effects and keep the chi and the blood to the normal, to the normal situation. And uh, we have the last group of herbs. It's called a messenger herb. So in this formula, Borneo is a messenger. What's a messenger? Some people call it envoy, envoy or guide herbs. So these herbs will help, help the whole formula target at a certain meridian or area of the body and to harmonize and integrate the actions of other herbs. So what's the benefits of this kind of formula theory? So the benefits I mentioned before, one, it can produce a synergistic effect. That means a one plus one larger than two and uh, reduce or clear away undesired side effects. Third thing is to improve bioavailability. 
we talk about uh, stove tonic, besides all the historical records, Pasley Pharmaceuticals also did lots of strict clinical trials, laboratory experiments to test whether it's true the formula really has the functions and really can help patients with, uh, with chest pain or with a circulatory dysfunction. So I will give you a summary of why and how this formula can help, can help you and your patient. So this is a, a summary graph. Three key points. One, it can protect myocardium. Second, it can improve blood flow. Third, it can protect the vascular integrity and vascular structure. We call it a multi-target protection. I, because I'm trained uh, in Western medicine, and also I heard I'm challenged by many you know, questions from uh, many Western, Western practitioners. So the question is, why is it, is it possible? So for this herb, it has multi-target protection. So you look at this graph. So this graph include, you know, this has the, the self tonic has a similar effect on blood vessels, just like a nitrates, statins, or on the myocardium, like, uh, you know, better blockers, or on the blood flow, like aspirin. Is it possible? I, I never thought about this multi-target protection idea, because later I will uh, show you more pictures about uh, this ingredients we know. There's a three herb, herbal extracts come together. Inside, there's uh, lots of uh, different ingredients. We call it active ingredients. So this is uh, not surprising for this uh, formula can have uh, different uh, functions targeting at uh, different organs, tissues, or cells. So this uh, uh, summary for the, the first part, effect on the blood vessels. So we talked about the bone meal. Not only the bone meal, but also tension, tension and uh, uh, panaxonotogenesis. Some experiments uh, have found out that they, ha they can dilate the coronary artery and also can relieve the spasm, protect the endothelium. Remember the endothelium we talked about? Yeah, the, the site where inflammatory reactions happen and also can reduce, protect the, the macro circulation by reducing plaque formation. And the second thing about uh, myocardial protection. So this, uh, the, uh, many studies have found out uh, the, the functions more focus on does it inhibit calcium overload and also can improve energy metabolism of the heart muscle. The third thing is to improve the blood flow. So the, there is so, uh, studies have found out this formula uh, can inhibit platelet aggregation and also can inhibit the adherence of uh, inflammatory cells such as white blood cells, master cells, macrophage, the adherent, it, their adherent with the endothelium, the inner lining of our blood vessels, and then just inhibit the inflammatory reaction. And also it has a, a pharmacological effects on anticoagulation. In China, many researchers are enchanted by this formula. They, they just use a Western medicine methodologies to study this formula. 
for example, I show you this national national funded project. So they separate. I said I talked before the active ingredients of this formula, and they they did animal experiments, cellular experiments. They test which target the active active ingredients may work on. So this picture show you the targets. So it from another perspective, it proved multi target protection. This idea is true. In this picture, so this picture gave us summary of what what happened in the macro circulation if we take soft tonic. So here we have a different uh, ingredients, cell so, uh, tension, cell wear, panaxonotogenesin, and uh, we can see they, the two herbs have uh, different uh, functions. That's an interesting part of, uh, of this uh, graph. This graph uh, is uh, summarized from uh, many uh, animal studies to prove what's the function of the two herbs. And we can see from, we talk about adherin, so we can see the inflammatory cells, now the white, white blood cells now are triggered, is triggered by inflammatory signals and then started to rolling, to roll aside instead of a row right in the middle of the blood vessel and then adhere to the endothelium. Once a white blood cell adheres with the endothelium, their oxidative reactions are triggered. So white blood cells may throw out free radicals and other chemicals, interleukins, to try to kill something. And from outside the blood vessels, the panaxonotogenesin has an effect to inhibit the degradation, uh, just inhibit the degradation of mast cells, and then inhibit the further, the further damage of the structure of the macro circulation after I, I give you the summary of the mechanics of this multi-target function. So now you may have a question. How about my patients? Who is eligible for this product? Talking about who is eligible for this product, you have seen this table before. So there is many different disease all related to over exaggerated, amplified inflammatory responses. So from here, not only the heart disease and also stroke, other other diabetes, macro macro circulation complications, and even Alzheimer's disease and other situations you can use this formula. So I just gave you, I will focus on several parts of this product, and I will show you the evidence. If you use this product on your patients, it can help. So the first one, we focus on the atherosclerosis. So this is a macro circulatory dysfunction. So from this study, this is a, uh, today I especially present to you several long-term studies. The purpose is to show you this product can be used for a long time, for long term, uh, because many situations we mentioned before, it's a chronic, uh, all chronic conditions. Suppose the patient will uh, need medicinal support for long term. So I'll show you for, from an efficacy 
point of view, and then later on I will show you from the safety point of view, this product is a, a, is a good choice for your patients. So now we look at uh, this uh, this study. This study observed patients with uh, type two diabetes uh, for over five years. So they are just randomized the patients into A, B, C, D, four groups. For the first group, it's a control group, only have the medications, Western medications to control the blood glucose and the blood pressure. The second group with blood glucose, blood pressure, and blood lipid control. The third group, is based on the, the the therapy of the second group, group B, and plus vitamin E. The last group is based on the second group therapy plus a self tonic. You look at uh, so we can look at here. So over the five years, self tonic can decrease decrease the thickness of uh, arterial intima medium. So what's the, what's the meaning for that? So for the, um, we call it IMT. For the measurement of IMT, it's a recommended, uh, recommended by, by European, uh, by Europe and uh, American medicine, uh, medicine associations. For what? For for high risk patients, if regularly screening methods cannot work work well with these high risk patients, so they recommend can use ultrasound to mirror the thickness of uh, intima media. That part is just uh, the most uh, the two layers of the inner part of an artery. So that, that part uh, will form the atherosclerosis. So we can see uh, self tonic, long term use of a self tonic can decrease the form formation of uh, atherosclerosis and also can control, can control the numbers of uh, atheroma plaques. Now we talk about symptoms of uh, angina. So for this, uh, we have a, a systematic review. So this is this is a meta analysis. Uh, just uh, summarized, uh, randomized, uh, controlled clinical trials of uh, 1,600 patients. So they they prove for if you use a soft tonic, we compared with uh, isosorbate dinitrate, it can has a better effect uh, to control the symptoms and also improve the ECG. I will introduce uh, uh, the most current study about this is uh, uh, held in, in the States. So it's uh, for the FDA approval as a new drug to market uh, in the, in the uh, in American market. So for this uh, protocol, follow the same protocol. This is uh, uh, the, it will run uh, for 28 days and uh, separate in low dosage, high dosage, and placebo groups. And we'll follow up uh, the patients. This is, um, this will show you exercise, exercise tolerance. For exercise tolerance, just like David did for the stress test, the so self tonic can improve the performance with the exercise tolerance test. And also, prove the same thing can decrease the frequency of angina and also decrease the nitrous consumption. So here's the results. We can, uh, for, for here, we can see self tonic can prolong 48 to 65 seconds after, uh, even if uh, after first take the self tonic or after 12 hours 
at the low dose, low, you know, dosage in our body, I can have the similar function, can improve the exercise test performance. If you would like to know more information about this, you can check the clinicaltrials.gov GOV to find more information. Other studies also use a soft tonic together with a cardiac surgeries or procedures. Also found out, you know, positive protective effects. So the, what's the implication of this this pool of evidence? So self tonic can reduce the symptoms and also can be used for long term together with routine therapy for those with a coronary artery disease. Without the procedures or surgeries or after the surgeries to control the recurrence and the symptoms. We also have evidence to show you saphtonic can also help cerebral vascular disease for the stroke. So this is a 70, 70 days study ran on 70 patients, stroke patients. And also see, uh, show you this, uh, the two groups. One is a routine therapy. Second is a routine therapy combined, combined with a soft tonic. Can show you the similar effect as a cardiovascular disease. Can improve the, the recovery of a stroke. How about uh, microcirculation situation? So this uh, show you uh, for the diabetes patients. If we use a soft tonic, we look at this uh, graph here. Uh, this is also a long-term study. The follow-up time, the the longest follow-up time is uh, seven years. So here, so we can see follow-up on the routine therapy. This is one group. And another group is the routine therapy combined with a soft tonic. It shows one interesting part is that uh, uh, it can, besides uh, just uh, compared it to the routine therapy, the soft tonic group can decrease the happening of, uh, you know, the urinary disease, urinary, and decrease the urinary albumin excretion rate. How about uh, uh, the eye? The eye, so this is done, uh, how about this is a kidney, this is the animal studies done on uh, rats, uh, this is the animal studies. And so if under the microscope, we can see the difference uh, from uh, this is a normal normal uh, group, and this is a diabetes model group. This is a cell cell tonic treatment group. You can see uh, the difference with a cell tonic cell treatment. So the structure, the microcirculatory structure, can keep almost integral, un undamaged. The same thing applies uh, to the retina. So we can see this normal structure and we can see the meshed and uh, proliferation in the diabetic patient, uh, the diabetic, diabetic group. And also if you use a soft tonic treatment, you can see the, keep the structure as a whole and uh, keep the function well. Other things I would like to, uh, I would, would like to introduce to you besides the functions. But this uh, different part of this uh, formula is uh, standard. So everything we can check the whole link for a natural product from the plantation, from extraction, uh, from uh, toxicology tests and the laboratory examinations and also from a manufacturer, from a storage. So for the Tesla group, it develops the links, or link them together, all standards, put them together to
present to you this one product, South Tonic. And behind, behind there is many, many laboratory work, lots of efforts put into this product. I will more focus on the, another part here. I'll show you this graph. Look at this graph. This graph is called uh, fingerprint. It's, uh, it's UPLC chromatographic of self-tonic. Tasley uses uh, this uh, fingerprint to test each batch of uh, self-tonic. That means they must uh, each pass. Each batch must have the same fingerprint. Otherwise, they won't provide the product to the consumer. And behind this product, there's a lot of patterns to protect it and to improve it. Talking about the traditional Chinese medicine, so many people are so familiar with you know herbal extraction. You do it by yourself, just like a brew, you brew your tea at home. However, the taste is really uh, not good at all. Tasley also did some work to work to improve to improve this product. It makes the product into this tiny, tiny dripping pills. So for the dripping pills, you can take it directly, put it under tongue, or swallow it. And the benefit is it can eliminate the unpleasant taste of the, the you know, herbal extracts. Second thing is for the dripping pills, Tesla has a special technology to put the all the extracts, active ingredients from notoginseng, cellware, bonio into a base. And the crystals and active ingredients may lay evenly in the base. And then just put them together at a relatively low temperature and won't expose them to oxygen to keep uh, their active, uh, active uh, activities and also uh, just uh, keep the minimal possible amount in one dripping peel to just tease out all unnecessary ingredients. You may find out uh, in other other products such as a tablet, you may find out uh, some uh, lubricants or magnesium or other steric magnesium. So this can decrease the size of the intake. At the same time, keep the present contained and also give you the best efficacy. So this is uh, the dripping pill I talked about. So we can take it both ways, swallow or sublingual, and make it so convenient to take and can has an effect very quickly and also can give you a very high um, bioavailability, decrease the side effects. The most common question I, I was asked is about safety. Whether the product is safe? So here is a summary of 917 publications between 1994 to 2008. So this is summary of all reported adverse events. So the first, the top one, is a gastrointestinal discomfort. This, uh, this mainly uh, correlates with, uh, with the taste, with taste of the product and the bonio. So some people just uh, cannot take it. However, it is very easy to avoid this situation. You just uh, take an after meal, then no problems. And the second thing is a dizziness, a headache, a reddish face. Why this happens? Why this happens? So we talk about a pharmacological or pharmacological effect of saftonic because 
the dilation of the blood vessels. It it takes effects. It takes effects in your body. So some people just uh, feel discomfort because the change of the uh, the tone of the blood vessels and uh, the flow of uh, blood flow. So they may feel discomfort. However, this is a good thing. How to how to deal with it if you if you meet this complaint? Just decrease the dosage. Let your body. Uh, become adaptable to to self tonic gradually. And then this situation won't happen again. And the other pretty low situation together with a nausea, thirsty, diarrhea, constipation, all focus on the gastrointestinal situations. However, if we check if we check the incidence reported here, you can see the incidence rate is pretty low. In other words, this is uh, uh, this product is only only has uh, only has minor adverse events and no serious adverse events ever being reported or observed. There is a drug uh, drug interaction experiments that Tesla also did. So here uh, there is a, this one is about is a summary of the in vitro uh, drug drug interaction experiments. So they just uh, incubate sulfonic with a human cytochrome P450. P450. So what's this uh, enzyme work? So this is in fact this a group of enzymes with uh, different uh, isoforms. They are they in charge of uh, metabolism of uh, many different kinds of uh, medications in our body. So if one product may inhibit or enhance the activity of uh, some of the isoforms, so that uh, some Medications related to this uh, to these isoforms, uh, the metabolism may be influenced, and there may adverse events happen later. And other uh, this uh, in a human inside is a human being take a, take a, the this is a from in in vitro the outside outside uh, this is the in vivo in vivo study we call it a five plus one cocktail DDI study so the same thing proved self tonic has has no impact on the pharmacokinetic profiles of all the five enzyme substrates another. Commonly asked a question is about warfarin. If my patient is on warfarin, is it safe? We use a soft tonic. So here, so this is also a trial in healthy subjects, and the conclusion is conclusion is a soft tonic has no effect on the window of a warfarin, and has no drug drug interaction with warfarin in healthy subjects. This is a summary of the substrates uh, uh, did on self tonic and uh, to show you uh, the different subjects or uh, SO enzymes they they have a function to to Functions to just have functions on different classes of medicines. For example, diabetes, or psychotic, or antibiotics, and gastrointestinal medications such as PPI. So they have different functions. And I here show you this. They all been tested. Has no drug drug interaction with this substrate. So how how to take this? Uh, for the they can we, we, we may contact with the different uh, consumers with the different needs. If it's a for primary prevention at a certain age, middle age, so we need to prevent 
the occurrence of uh, cardiovascular disease can take one to two capsules per day, swallow it. And if for secondary prevention, two to three per day. And the beautiful part of this product, I mentioned before, you can open the capsule and use it as an emergency use, just two capsules, put it sublingually. Within five minutes, the patients can, can feel the change of the pain. And for diabetic complication prevention, can take two to three capsules per day and swallow it. So I talk about, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, the different thing, I, I, I just want to focus here, uh, emphasize again, this is sublingual and swallow, both tabs can use it. So I would like to, Hasa, I would like to take any questions if there are, before we make a summary. So Hasa, I pass this to you. Okay, everybody. If you have any questions, um, please either type them into the chat room or also you can type them into the Q&A section. Um, Dr. Zhao, I need you to unmute yourself uh, so you'll be able to answer the questions. Perfect. While we are waiting for some questions, I have a few that I'd like to ask, uh, partially for my own information, but also because I know these are types of questions that will get asked by practitioners for their patients. Mm -hmm. um, so you've just reviewed the safety information and mm -hmm. safety with other drug, uh, pharmaceutical drug prescriptions. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of our patients um, that are coming to see practitioners in the natural health field, um, especially mm -hmm. if they're cardiovascular patients, um, mm -hmm. they will be working often with um, um, their medical doctor or a cardio specialist and often yeah. are on a variety of medications. Um, so how, so question number one is safety of self-tonic mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. potentially a cocktail of drugs. And then number two, how um, would, could the conversation go uh, to say self-tonic is safe to add in potentially if they are on a variety of different drugs so the medical doctor will agree that they can actually take it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question, really good question. Thank you, Haza. So for the first, for the safety profile, profile of this product, so we, we need to, uh, we need a first one to adjust this product as an adjuvant therapy. What's the adjuvant therapy? Uh, so is it just combined with other, other therapies? So in China, this product has been in the market for over 20 years. And the herbs, the single herb, uh, single herbs has been uh, over hundreds, thousand years been used uh, by the Chinese population. So this always can combine with other therapy. It's not to use the product to replace the routine therapy. The first point. The second point I would like to make, if we review the meta-analysis and uh, the, 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 the trials I mentioned for the di diabetic, the diabetic patients, uh, so we have a lot of uh, evidence to show that uh, this product is safe to combine with uh, routine therapy. Uh, it can be it can be the the medications to control hypertension uh, or diabetes or current cardiovascular situation better blockers ACEIs and the third part I would like to mention even if we check uh, uh, we have a close look at the protocol uh, I showed you before uh, for the FDA phase two clinical trials. In that protocol, we include uh, recruited patients on routine therapy that are either on better, uh, better blockers or other 
other you know medications to control their system. So it's not to replace the current routine therapy. It's try to combine them together. So the last point I would like to see how to how to present this. So the evidence and also experiment results. So I showed before the drug drug interaction. That's a, the classical way to prove there is a no no danger no danger to comply with the routine therapy. So I showed you the drug drug interaction. Uh, the here I just scroll by my slides to here to show you. So we check the different. Uh, Isoenzymes, different isoenzymes. I mentioned before, uh, they they are in charge of uh, the metabolism of uh, a wide variety of uh, medications, including treat, including uh, medications to treat diabetes, or uh, you know hypertension, or gastrointestinal disease, infection, psychotic psychotic uh, symptoms, so it's a safe because it won't have impact on the metabolism of these medications. The, the one thing I would like to uh, remind uh, the practitioners is uh, we, uh, we would like to suggest uh, our customers uh, to separate uh, the intake, intake of uh, Western medicines from the herbal medicines. Uh, just uh, separate uh, for 40, 40 minutes, that's enough, yeah. So Hasa, uh, is I hope that answers your questions. Yes, that's great, thank you very much. Um, we actually now have a number of questions, so that was good mm -hmm. timing to get more questions flowing. In the mm -hmm. same um, question, line of questioning, uh, self tonic uh, is safe to take with uh, statin drugs. Yes, yes. So we have trials I showed before. There's a one trial. It's a, just a take. It's a long term trial over years. So uh, the the groups, the different groups uh, in the self tonic treatment group is uh, self tonic combined with uh, statins to control blood lipid and also other medications. So yes, it is okay to take uh, together. However, as I said before, separate them uh, for at least 40 minutes. Excellent, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so um, we have a few other questions here, and these are more about um, conditions and how self tonic is working with that. So the first question would be, uh, can you please be more specific about total cholesterol reduction um, and how it works with self-tonic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So yeah, I, that, that, let me see whether I can go back to, there's one slide here. So yeah, we can see here. So yeah, uh, there is a different uh, studies uh, focus on the you know cholesterol blood lipid control. Uh, for the for the subtonic, uh, there is uh, for the clinical trials uh, show it. Uh, it has a positive effect to increase the level of uh, uh, HDL and also decrease the uh, uh, triglyceride, so uh, TG, sorry TG, and uh, so and the VLDL, and also we uh, uh, there is uh, there are animal experiments to sh to make a model, so it's a disease model, it's a high blood lipid model, and then use a soft tonic, and also uh, has uh, this, uh, has a similar effect. That's a improve HDL and decrease TG and decrease VLDL. Is that okay to uh, for Yeah, is that helpful? Yeah, that's excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so then the next question is regarding diabetic complications and mm -hmm. how does it help with the diabetic uh, complications and the types of examples that um, diabetic complications it does help with. Mm -hmm. So for uh, for the diabetic diabetic complications, uh, there's uh, we, there's a difference. So first one is the micros. Uh, micro circulation. That's uh, the biggest part. Uh, so the target is, is a kidney and a retina, and uh, and just the extremities, extremities. So the second part is a macro circulation. Macro circulation. Uh, there's uh, for the diabetic patients, they may uh, have a uh, more risk to later on develop into a uh, cardio cardiac disease or stroke and also for other neuro neuro complication infection so there's a whole whole spectrum of uh, complications how softonic can help with uh, diabetic patients so in more focus on the circulatory system especially the the microcirculation, and I show you uh, here the experimental results is to keep uh, the decrease the inflammatory injuries to the blood vessels, keep the integrity of uh, blood vessels, and then uh, keep the blood flow uh, normal. So and then can uh, prevent the damage of um, uh, the microcirculation uh, in the kidney and the retina as well. At the same time, as mentioned before, subtonic also has an effect on inhibition of uh, atheroma, atherosclerosis. So from here, it also can help to prevent or decrease the occurrence of, uh, you know, the big blood vessels disease. So from both, all focus on the circulatory system. So the last question I have here is about self tonic, and can it be paired with vitamin E supplementation? I show you the compared with uh, vitamin vitamin E therapy. Uh, I lost the track of it. Uh, never mind. Yeah, there is a one group just combined with. Uh, uh, there's a one group, but it's not a self tonic. Uh, it's uh, it's a combined with a vitamin therapy. It's a independent group combined vitamin E with a routine therapy. So the rationale behind this uh, trial design is um, for the self tonic. Many active ingredients in the self tonic are. Anti has uh, have uh, antioxidant effects, so so the researchers uh, just uh, created this idea whether uh, whether we can use uh, just uh, take a self tonic as an antioxidant and uh, compare with uh, another classical antioxidant vitamin E to see whether it it has uh, paralyzed effects. So yeah, um, but we don't have evidence to to show that uh, self tonic uh, should compare should combine with vitamin E, or vitamin E uh, taking may be beneficial for self tonic treatment. No, we don't have that. It's just uh, just if you take uh, if you. From one day, you can think uh, you know there is a there is there is antioxidant function of a self tonic. However, from that that trail, we can see vitamin E definitely uh, vitamin E's effect it cannot be parallel to the uh, self tonic treatment. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, we have uh, a couple more questions here. Um, can self tonic be used as a prevention for diabetes? Um, this um, doctor has a patient with hypertension, only hypertension, but was wondering if she used self tonic with this patient, if it can also be 
considered in a way as a prevention for diabetes? Mm -hmm. Good question. So we, we can separate this uh, question into two parts. One, whether self-toning can be used in, um, in patients with uh, hypertension? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I just read uh, several, several studies uh, recently. So they talk about, or talk about uh, the both macrocirculation and uh, microcirculation uh, contribute a lot uh, for the hypertension pathology happening and also treatment. So the key point is uh, we, uh, we, we just um, most commonly, we more focus on the big blood vessels to dilate, de dilate the blood vessels, decrease the pressure in the blood vessels. However, we all know that uh, uh, the medium and the small vessels, vessel beds are the key point for the uh, for the progression of a hypertension, for the hardening of the blood vessels, and the later years make the blood pressure and becomes even harder to control so because the hardening of the medium and the small size of blood vessels. So we for the hypertension treatment, I recommend self tonic combined with a regular therapy and uh, it can help to relieve the pressure in the in the microcirculation and uh, relieve the whole system's pressure and the second question uh, whether self tonic can prevent the happening of uh, diabetes i i would say no if we talk about uh, uh, the increase of uh, how to say it, yes or no? How to say it, yes or no? Uh, from uh, the, the point of self-tonic can relieve the insulin resistance from quite an early stage, preliminary diabetic situation. Insulin re resistance, um, self-tonic can help. Um, so how, how to help it? help for people with a metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome people have uh, actual uh, fat, actual fat, especially the center part, abdominal fat. But uh, there is some uh, studies uh, found out that for people, for people overweight, overweight, uh, they have uh, they have problem mac macrocirculatory dysfunction because. Uh, and too much fat, adipose tissues in the in the you know around the microcirculatory um, capillary circulatory system. So later on, uh, they may uh, develop the insulin resistance. From this part, self tonic can help to prevent or relieve the insulin resistance. However, for people with uh, with a, you know, for other reasons, they developed into diabetes. For example, for the type one diabetes, uh, or some genetic, genetic abnormalities, um, self tonic won't help to prevent. However, if the person developed already developed into diabetes, self tonic can help to, you know, just make. Make the situation better, prevent the complication. Thank you. That was a very good explanation. So it's not so much related to preventing insulin resistance. However, it's definitely related to the circulation aspects, and diabetic complications often are related to circulation, so it helps to improve that aspect. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, <laughs> I think yeah, I, I just was yeah, trying to we, summarize what you were saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we can see this way. So uh, from uh, certain types of uh, patients, uh, if they have, they, they, they have, they, you can, you know, see they have a metabolic syndrome. So they may have uh, insulin resistance. So self-tonic can help. So this, uh, 
from the metabolic syndrome, so next step may later on develop into diabetes. For this type of patients, yes, softonic can help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you're right. Uh, has a, so this can improve circulation, especially the microcirculation, and it can relieve the insulin resistance. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I've got two more questions here. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how cells tonic can um, help lower total cholesterol? Mm hmm. Um, I I do have, uh, if you're talking about it, uh, I would like to clarify this question. Uh, do, you, do you want to know about the mechanism of why saphotonic can help to lower the cholesterol or uh, whether saphotonic can help to lower cholesterol? So what, what, what's the question I would like to clarify? That, that, that's right, how saphotonic can help lower cholesterol. Okay, yeah. Um, so there are so some animal studies to show. I mentioned that high blood lipid animal models. So from there, they test the test the, the why saphotonic can help to decrease the cholesterol. So there is a one one possibility mechanism is focus on the apple. Apple protein, so so the 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 protein the protein to help to metabolize cholesterol and get involved with the metabolism. Uh, so that's a, a, a key point why saphotonic can help. There is a, a other mechanism. Uh, however, the more there, the, the more focused one is um, uh, more focused on the adjustment to the apple A and the apple B. If you're interested in um, the details of uh, the studies, uh, I may just uh, what well, I can provide more studies later. Uh, can self tonic be used to prevent stroke in the context of uh, atrial fibrillation? Mm. So we, yeah, this is a good question. For the self tonic, self tonic. Um, so the key part, uh, how self tonic may play a role in this uh, kind of a uh, situation. So it's a uh, focus. It can help. Uh, to for the one is uh, blood flow rheology, and uh, for the you know is uh, we can test the blood flow to one is make the blood flow more smoothly. Simply put it, more smoothly. There's a lot of parameters uh, soft tonic can improve, and uh, second part is try to prevent the aggregation of a platys into anticoagulation. From these two parts, definitely softonic can help people with AF and then later on prevent uh, a clots in, in the you know, arteries, maybe in the brain, or it, it can be in the heart or different parts of the body. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Zhao, for presenting uh, a uh, very detailed and thorough presentation on both macro and microcirculation, and then also on uh, our new launch of uh, self tonic in Canada, and not only just talking about self tonic, uh, but also talking about these herbs from a TCM perspective and also from a Western medicine perspective, and why these herbs are very relevant in cardiovascular. Um, health and circulation health. Thank you for joining the webinar, Discover a Self Tonic, Multi-Target Protection for the Heart and Vessels. And thank you again, Dr. Zhao, for uh, presenting a wonderful webinar tonight. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.